from getting jobs is the technology divide. It is killing our community. Technology is moving so fast that the people we serve cannot keep up with it. So they don't, they don't stand a chance to get those jobs. And then the entry level jobs that used to be available are now being done by computers, a lot of them. So we have a lot of work to do and it's urgent work. It cannot wait. So we need Atlanta to help. Um, what would you say was the biggest challenge over the years for you all and what do you not want to see happen as you move into your future? I think the biggest challenge that we've had is that people think we're just holiday dinners, we just do holiday dinners. We're open. So Ms. Day, um, tell me who uh, Susan Tilson Bank is and what is your relationship with uh, Atlanta and its community? Uh, Citizen Strength Bank is a uh, African American owned uh, community bank uh, that's housed in the city of Atlanta with locations in Columbus, Georgia and Birmingham and Utah, Alabama. Okay. And, uh, uh, um, now, I sat in a meeting with you before and I heard you express uh, your passion for the African American community and uh, and your desire for a uh, trust bank to be the uh, uh, vehicle that drives the development and um, economic development of the black community in particular. What does it take for a citizen trust um, bank to serve the customers in conjunction with the passion that you express? Um, I think it takes a community as a whole. Um, we all have to recognize that the healthiness of a whole community um, requires all of our supporting each other. Um, it starts with economics, and we got healthy economics in the community. Uh, community. 
own businesses, then you'll have great education, you'll have families that are healthy and whole, uh, and that's what we strive. We're striving for healthy and whole communities, and we believe that starts with an economic cycle and us supporting each other and our businesses and putting our dollars back into our communities. And I'm about to ask, can you just say a little bit more about some specific things that customers can do to help uh, achieve that end? Well, we look at it as a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. It's not just what our customers can do for us, it's what we can do for our customers. And how we can, we hope to help finance their homes, uh, their cars, help send their children to college, help grow and build their businesses. Uh, and just we feel like in that partnership that that will help us uh, together establish home and healthy communities. Now, I understand that, that uh, Sister Church Bank hasn't been as quiet as some might think. Can you enlighten the community on some of the uh, community efforts and uh, recognitions that, uh, uh, of uh, Citizen Trust Bank? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, one thing that I'm extremely proud of, uh, we do um, a literacy program throughout uh, about 10 to 20, I mean, I'm sorry, 20 uh, middle and high schools throughout the metro area. We've impacted about 2,100 students. Uh, we do a lot of um, mortgage buying seminars. We participate with churches to talk about wealth building. Um, we support things like Jose Alfie's The Hungry. Uh, this was a, a banner, not just a project, but this was a banner part of what we believe is as being not just in the community, yet, but a part of the community. And of course, you partnered with uh, Greenlight Think Tank and, and, um, and uh, 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 Killer Mike. Yes. We, we partnered with them. Um, because we believe that, that we share a common mission of uh, uh, building healthy communities by supporting each other and growing and building businesses uh, and families and you know, producing healthy communities. Okay. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, uh, compared to the community, the relationship that Citizen Trust Bank has formed with Hosea uh, for, uh, Peter Hong. Jose, Alpina, Hungry, Mr. and Mrs. O have been customers of ours for a very long time. But one of the things uh, of our bank and one of the things that we're committed to be is not just in the communities, but being a part of the community. And the things that they're doing here, um, we are so supportive and amazed at the things they're doing. We wanted to be a part. We financed this transaction. There are a lot of banks or you know people that would look at this and say there's risk here, uh, this is a stretch, but we look at it as an opportunity to make a difference. And lastly, personally, what does it mean to you to help forge, have, uh, uh, be a part of this relationship as the executive of uh, Trust Bank? Personally, you know, my mantra is what my parents always taught, we are to help each other, uh, we to unite and to try to bring somebody else along the way and uh, we've got the resources and we've got the platform uh, we should be reaching out and so personally this was very special to me that we were participating in this uh, in this venture in this partnership and we will continue to do that as a matter of fact we'll use our resources to try to further the efforts and help get this building uh, up to where it needs to be thank you for taking time Tom. how you doing doing fine how okay we Will you both tell me who you are and what's your relationship to Citizen Trust Bank and what's your relationship to the bit, this event today? Absolutely. I'm Jim Dow. I am a uh, commercial banker, senior commercial agent lender at Citizen Trust Bank, and this is my boss. Yep, I'm Farron Logan, and I run the division of commercial bank. And um, what uh, does it mean to you to have uh, a partner in this venture today? Well, I mean, for me, it, it means a lot. I mean, it was the right thing to do uh, as an institution. Uh, there was no pause, no hesitation on our part. Uh, the Jose organization is really iconic when you think about it. I mean, they're an iconic organization, a giant in the community. And for what they do to all of the indigent uh, people in our community, it's just, uh, you know, it's just priceless. And so we felt the sort of a moral, moral obligation to do what we can to be helpful in this, in this process. 
and so we're glad to be a part of it. Whatever small part we can have in that process, we're glad to be a part of it. Maybe I can ask uh, both of you, uh, what does it, uh, what is uh, uh, the Sister Trust Bank commitment uh, to the community and, 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 uh, and, and what is it de endeavors toward the community? Oh, absolutely. I mean, our, our, our whole model is to uh, serve this community of Atlanta and the surrounding areas. Uh, Ninety-six years ago, this bank was started by a gentleman looking to make sure that there was a banking institution for African Americans here in the Atlanta market. They were always community-based. We've always been community-based, and everything that we do is focused on the community. So any decision that we make internally, uh, we're always asking ourselves, how does that serve this community of Atlanta? And how can we make sure that everyone that needs access to funding, access to banking services, gets that and, and gets it at reasonable costs and are able to uh, be successful in their business, be successful in their personal uh, lives. So everything that we do is absolutely ground, uh, grounded here in the Atlanta community and it's always at the front of our thoughts. Um, sir. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I'll ask you the same thing, but if, if uh, what uh, commitment, what, what is a system trust uh, bank commitment to the community? And it, what is its endeavors in the community and from your perspective? Well, I think for me, it's personal. I mean, you know, I get up every day and I work for quite a few other uh, financial institutions. I work for some of the larger, some of the larger and more regional institutions, but it's nothing like getting up every day and, and, and being a part of an institution that's really serving the very community that I grew up in and I was a part of. They've helped so many people's lives. And, and, and it's really rewarding. You know, Jim talked about the 96 years history. It's nothing like being able to drive around the community and, and literally see the impact economic development in communities that historically would not have been able to get bank loans. So we were one of the earliest banks out there for African Americans, for example, being able to provide you know, access to capital to folks who need the capital that they, you know, the necessary capital to build their homes, to start their businesses, to, uh, to expand their, you know, whatever location they may be operating out of. So we're proud of So now, help me out a little bit. Um, um, what? Name a few things for me that the community can do, the customers can do, the community can do to help you all, help Citizen Trust, be who we want them to be in the community. Well, I, I would say the first thing is, is to pass the word. You know, tell everybody, tell, tell your, your family members about Citizen Trust Bay. Your deposit relationships with us, obtain a loan, obtain a commercial loan, obtain a residential market loan, get a vehicle loan. You know, I think that if people knew about us and they knew that we had the same products and services and financial solutions that all the other large institutions provided, I think you would see people, a major influx of people coming to Bank of Citizens Trust Bank if they really knew personalized attention that we get. You know, when people come and sit in our office and tell the story, we recognize that uh, we take a very human approach to the, the decision and process. We recognize uh, the plight of our people and we can relate to it. We empathize with it and we realize that people may have attenuated circumstances. And we're willing to listen and we're willing to, to figure out ways to get it done. We'll exhaust every opportunity to get a deal done. And that's what we, that's the commitment that we have. And one last question, maybe. Uh, there is a perception that uh, the community don't know you. There is a perception, true or false, uh, 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 right or wrong. What uh, will you all, what can you all do about that? That's a great question because it is a, a hurdle that we constantly have to get over. Uh, being a small community bank, we don't have the budgets of nationwide banks to go ahead and advertise during the Super Bowl or on TV and a lot of radio advertising. So a lot of what has to occur for us to be well known is to continue new deals like this Hosea deal that we've done today. And um, folks that have a connection with the community, such as the Omalamis, talking about us all the time, letting them know how this got done. 
Uh, just a little blurb that will occur on the news because of this event today is going to go a long way to helping our bank get uh, more well known in the community and to allow us to do more. Our clients are our best advertising. They talk about us all the time with uh, their connections and make sure the folks understand that we that we are here and what we do. And what I'd like to ask everyone to do, if you bank at a large nationwide bank, ask yourself exactly why you do that. Um, think of yourself as one customer amongst a hundred million customers as opposed to being with a community bank, especially Citizens Trust Bank, where you're one customer amongst a few a number of customers. So ask yourself, do I need those services or, I, or am I better served by a community bank that's actually in this community and, and serves the people sort of tailored to what they need here. So the best way to do it, word of mouth, let folks know we're here and then come in and just visit with us and you'll see the difference. Well I've asked myself those questions and hopefully I can get other people to ask the same questions to themselves. Thank you. We both. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm here with uh, State Representative um, Abel Mabel. How you doing, Ms. Mabel? Very good, very good. Look, I want to ask you right off the bat, I want to ask you, well, what does b uh, uh, banking and access to banking and, and, have, and, 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 and having a black bank in our community, what does that mean? Oh, well, it's very powerful. Um, what it does, it opens up um, financial opportunities that you might not have in other, uh, maybe what we call majority banks. And so it is always a blessing. Uh, uh, I've always had accounts in uh, African American banks. Uh, I'm sad that Capital City Bank closed, but our accounts eventually uh, got back to our Citizen Trust Bank. So, so now I have all my accounts, well, most of my accounts in the time. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's good because you need access to financial services. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are some of the benefits uh, for the community for uh, citizens to uh, uh, open some accounts in a black bank, in Citizen Trust Bank? Well, what it is is we got to have a mutual beneficial agreement. So not only am I an advocate of um, making sure that we have deposit money in black banks, but that black banks support black businesses and support our community as well. It's always going to be a two-way street. Mm -hmm. um, are there any particular uh, thoughts or concerns that you have in terms of the uh, flow of money into our community when it comes to legislations and when it comes to uh, uh, banking? Are there any uh, legislation that you are focused on? Well, let me just say this and I'm going to end up and I have to be somewhere. But what I want to say is uh, in our area we have a financial center uh, and basically where we deal with finances on the west side. We have a particular area like a credit union and that is right on George B. Boone. And it's used as another opportunity for those who have been marginalized, have not been able to get accounts, who do not know about financial literacy. So we have a center on the west side that's been supported by the uh, Arthur Blake Foundation and other, other uh, entities. And so we are sort of trying to bring our people into a situation where they can understand saving money, investing in money, investing their money, and also uh, having partnerships that don't allow them to have to always go to check cash and places and that type of thing. Okay. All right. Thank you for taking time to talk to us. Mr. Jones, or it's a, a whole warehouse full of food, they got to know in their hearts that we're going to do right by what they give us. That's how you become a pillar and remain a pillar, by walking a very straight line of integrity, of being authentic, 
and being honest to the vision that started us in the first place. I heard Andrew Young say the other night on CNN, which was the bottom line for all of us, he said, look, in the end, all that matters, are you feeding the hungry? Are you clothing the naked? Are you giving water to the thirsty? Are you visiting those in prison and helping those who just got out of prison? Visiting the sick and the shut-ins, the widows and the orphans. If we're doing that basic foundational work, it'll keep us as a pillar in the community, and we can go on for the next generation. But that is a principle we must walk in. Let me ask you, uh, I think you, that you would be a good person to talk about something that most citizens in the community ex uh, experience and go through. So can you say something to me about being, uh, 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 about sacrifice, about commitment, and about uh, sac sacrifice and commitment, and, and yeah. Well, I, I think it all, it all for us goes back to our faith. I can tell you that there were nights when I stayed up all night, walking the floor, just wondering what was going to happen. I can tell you there were times when I said, oh well, maybe this is it, and we're done for. And whenever I felt that way, I had to realize that this is not me. I truly believe that there's a supernatural force at work here at Hosea Feed the Hungry. That this God is using us to feed his people. So if it is God's ministry, then it's God's responsibility to keep us open. And so once I let it go like that, then the stress is not so much on me and, and my husband. The other thing is that we have volunteers and staff members who hold us up. So a lot of times they're the ones out there with the trucks doing the food on the move. They're the ones coming in at six in the morning to make sure that people get their rent assistance. They're the ones that are loading in for Thanksgiving 24 hours they've been up. So it's the people around you. You have to trust them, believe that they have your good at heart, and let them do their job. You know, uh, a lot of people think that you all just give food to people when they want it, but you all do much, much more than that. Yes. Well, we have many programs, such as our benefits, federal benefits analysis, which will uh, provide food stamps, peach care, Medicaid, Medicare, any federal benefit. We do rent assistance to those people about to get evicted. We keep people's utilities on. We serve 16 senior citizens high rise with hot home delivered food, as well as what we call sit and sip that are parties that we have for them where they get low impact exercise. Well Care is going to fund that for us. So yeah, we do a lot more than the food piece, but the food piece is our anchor. That's what keeps us grounded. And out from that comes computer training and case management and the other things that we do. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who you are? I'm sorry? Tell me who you are. Uh, my name is Awa Dele Omalami, and, and you um, work here at Jose Feed the Hunt. Okay, how long have you been working here? About 12 years. Okay, and, what are you, and, and how are you, uh, how are you com a t a comprehending this uh, move in this new setting that y'all in? Oh, it's great. It's a great thing when, uh, when uh, a business that cares for the people can, you know, be stable. And uh, that's really what this move means for us. Yeah, it means yeah. that we can function without worrying about whether or not we're going to have a building. Okay. Um, and so it also gives us creative design, you know, in this space, you know, so we can be more efficient, be more functional, uh, more, a little more user friendly. All right. Man. Yes, sir. And what's your word to the community? Do, uh, do, do they need to worry about anything? I'm sorry? What's your word to the community? Do they need to, do they need to worry about anything? No, in terms of Jose Williams being here and still being viable in the community. Well, Jose Williams is the community. You know, it's the community volunteering. It's the community donating food. You know, and when the community finds itself in need, they can come and get the benefits of the love that other people are sharing. You know, so the question is, you know, what what are, what are communities that don't have a Jose Feed the Hungry? And when people find themselves in need, where are they supposed to go? Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Yes, sir. I thank you for that perspective. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Right. Hi. Hello. How are you? All right. Will you tell me who you are and what's your relationship to uh, Jose Pita Hunger? Yes. My name is Vera Allen, and I'm one of the key volunteers. I've been volunteering for roughly just over 10 years or so. And um, what I do for the organization, I handle all of their corporate donors during the uh, inner season and throughout the rest of the year, throughout their other major events. And I've also utilized some of my personal um, professional skills and helped help the organization by building databases or what have you or things like that that's needed. Um, what has it meant to you to be a volunteer at, at Jose? Because when I first start, when I first came upon the, uh, the organization, yes, they were doing a lot of stuff by hand, paper, and all of that stuff. And then the more that I saw what, what they were doing, um, I figured that if I could contribute my little bit of professional skills, that, that would help speed things along um, for them to get grants and so on. What uh, the uh, what is the adjustment? Uh, like or gonna be like uh, as you have transitioned from Donnelly over here? Um, I, I'm not really sure because I don't really work at the Donnelly building. It's kind of hard for me to really answer that question. I mean, just by looking at uh, the Donnelly building, I will miss the, the Donnelly building because that, I mean, that feels like home. That's where everything began and started. And But I know that coming over here to this new space, of course, everything goes forward. It's going to be bigger and better. It's going to be going to be able to provide more uh, to the community. And um, I'm really actually looking forward to it. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me.